Hey guys, Alex Messel here and as you know, AI is taking over the world. It's practically everywhere and Premiere Pro is no exception. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my five favorite Premiere Pro built-in AI tools that save me a ton of time. So let's jump right in. The first one is the Remix tool. What it does is it can increase or decrease the duration of any music. Let me show you how it works. Let's add a song to our timeline. Then we go to where our Ripple Edit tool usually is, click and hold it and go down to pick our Remix tool. Now we can adjust the length of our music and Premiere will automatically analyze how to increase or decrease the duration. You see these lightning lines? Those are the spots where AI did a cut and transitioned to another part of the song. Now, if you want to customize the way it handles the Remix, for that, we have to go to the Essential Sound panel and with our music clip selected, we click at Customize and here we have two parameters, segments and variations. If you dial segments to fewer, it will try to make as less cuts as possible, whereas more segments will result in more cuts. The variation slider is a bit more complicated. So to simplify it, for songs which are more instrumentally complex, you'd likely want to move the slider towards harmonic. And for simpler songs, like just some chill beats, where there's not so many instruments playing, you'd likely want to dial it closer to melodic. And as you see, in our case, it barely makes any difference. So let's just leave it in the middle. So yeah, as I mentioned, the cool thing about this remix tool is it works in both directions. You can extend your music or you can shorten it. The obvious use case is to extend the background music to make it play through the whole video and skip the hurdle of manually copying it and looking for transition points. But second amazing use case is to shorten the music down to match the length of the intro, for example. Big pro tip, if you like a specific part of the song and not the entire song, you can first cut out the part you like and then extend or shorten it with the remix tool. That's what I do the most. So the second one on our list is the audio enhancement tool. Currently, it's only available in Premiere Pro Beta, but if you watch this video a few months after I published it, you might already have it in the regular version of the Premiere Pro. What this feature is, is it's basically Adobe Podcast Enhanced Speech brought into Premiere Pro, which is a mind-blowing tool. What it does is it turns crappy audio into, well, less crappy audio, sometimes even into good audio. Let me just show you how it works. Select your clip and go to the Essential Sound panel. Here, with our audio clip selected, we auto-tag it. And here you see at the very top, we have Enhanced Speech. Let's click it. Now it's going to analyze our dialogue clip and try to make it better. Let's hear the result. So. Here's the before. No proper audio setup for this recording. Can we just use our camera's built-in microphone and make it sound good enough? And here's after. No proper audio setup for this recording. Can we just use our camera's built-in microphone and make it sound good enough? It's not a bad result, right? We can also play around with the slider. If it's too robotic, we dial it down a bit but if it's fine, we can even go all the way to the right. The results are mostly great using this AI, but like with any AI, you have to be careful because sometimes it results in like robotic voice or it makes your audio just sound really weird. You know, typical 2023 20, AI stuff. So this tool is for sure very powerful. I actually use it daily and not only with bad audio, but also with good audio just to, you know, give it a slight boost or remove some background noise. But as I mentioned, is not perfect. Sometimes it produces those weird artifacts. So just don't trust it blindly. Check the results, see if you like it and if you do, use it. Moving on to the next AI tool, we have Scene Edit Detection, which does exactly what the name says. You can drop a video on your timeline, which consists of many clips. So basically an already edited video. And then what this AI does is it detects the cut points in the video when one clip switches to another and splits it into the individual clips. Instead of finding the cut points manually, you just select the entire video, right click it and select scene edit detection. Then you have three options. One is it will apply a cut at each detected point. Second is it will create a bin of subclips from each detected cut points, which looks like this. 
And the third option, it will create a marker at each detected cut point. I use this tool very often on my freelance video editing projects. You know, when I need to edit a video for a client and the footage he provides me are not like individual clips, but they're like a few already edited videos from the past. So what I do is I just drop those videos on my timeline, let the scene edit detection tool do its job. And then I just, you know, rearrange those clips, make a new video, take a little bit from there, a little bit from here. So this AI tool just helps me make my work much more efficiently. So here comes our fourth Premiere Pro built-in AI tool, which is called Auto Reframe Sequence. Let's say I shot this video in 16x9, but I want to publish it as a YouTube short. For that, it needs to be vertical or 9x16. I could just change sequence settings from 1920x1080 to 1080 by 1920 but if we play this video now you'll see that i am moving as i'm speaking and sometimes i'm going slightly off frame so if we want to avoid that we obviously have to track my movement for that we select our sequence and choose auto reframe sequence here we'll write our new sequence name set target aspect ratio let's do 9 by 16 and pick our preferred motion tracking method slower motion will make a smoother tracking whereas the faster motion will do a better job tracking faster movement but it'll therefore be a bit more jumpy default is something in between those two so let's just choose it for this example at the bottom you can also decide if you want to have your clips nested or not i'll choose not to nest and we can hit create the new sequence has been created and in the bottom right corner you'll see ai analyzing our motion when it's done we can see the result sometimes the topic is so intense and emotional that the speaker moves him or herself from left to right all the time. So yeah, it tracked my movement pretty good and no manual position keyframing was needed. And last but not least, Adobe's Premiere Pro auto transcribe feature. Let's go to our timeline once again, then open text panel. If you don't have it open, just click window and select text. Here we go to transcript and hit transcribe. From here, we can quickly check the transcript check if AI made any mistakes, if so, correct them. Then if we're happy, we click here, select the settings we want. For now, I will use these settings and hit create captions. And here it is, a new subtitle track appeared in our timeline. Then we can go to essential graphics panel and adjust the style of our subs. When we're happy, we need to save them as a style so that it applies to all the subs in our sequence. And on bigger projects, we can save ourselves a lot of time. So that's it guys. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Like it if it was helpful, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next video.